Hello everybody, let's get straight to it. Today we are reviewing an article called Microsoft Dynamics X Production Order Scheduling Tips and Tricks. The article is written by Everett Boss, who is, according to his LinkedIn profile, is a solution architect at Sikich Technology Resource. Everett is quite a prolific author. He has written 32 articles and blogs on Sikich Technology Resource website, 15 on msdynamicsworld.com, and 23 on community.dynamics.com resource. The article we're reviewing today was written on March 11, 2016. Let's take a closer look at the first part of the article called resource efficiency percentage. The point that is being made here is that, that by reducing efficiency percentage set on the resource, we effectively reduce capacity that is available for reservation when the resource is used for production order scheduling. To demonstrate that point, I have created a new resource called CNC Mill and have set an efficiency percentage to 50%. I then created a brand new production order for item number D0111 and quantity 10. The route that is used for this production order has only one operation Operation number 10, trim, cut. Resource requirements set for this operation is specifically calling for our resource 100-500. The run times for this operation is one hour to produce 10 finished good units. Therefore, because our production order is 10 units, we expect that this resource will be utilized for one hour to finish all 10 units that are scheduled. Let's run job scheduling for this production order. As you can see right here, I'm using finite capacity to schedule my production order. Once the scheduling routine is over, we can review capacity reservations for our resource. You can see that the total run time is one hour to produce 10 units of the finished good, but the time that is reserved is actually between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. That is because of 50% efficiency that was set for that resource. Few points to make here. You can achieve the same result by changing efficiency on the working times for the calendar that is used for our resource. In our case, this is a production calendar. We're going to click on working times. We're going to reduce efficiency percentage for a specific day, which is today to 50%. We will then change the efficiency on our resource back to 100 and run scheduling jobs again. The net result now is the same. We can see that resource is still reserved between 7 and 9 a.m. Another point that I would like to add to this article is by changing the efficiency percentage on the resource, we effectively change the capacity load that is available for that resource. So if we change the efficiency percentage from 100 to 80% and click on capacity load now, we will see that even though my calendar calls for eight working hours in my calendar, my capacity is now reduced by 20% and is only 80% of that eight hours, which is 6.4 hours. One more last thing on is, is even though the resource group is not mandatory field when setting up a brand new resource, it's still required in order to successfully use job scheduling functionality on the production order. When the resource group is not specified on the resource, you're gonna get this error when you're trying to run a job scheduling routine, which basically telling us that there is no resource resource group that is available to meet the requirements, even though there are, it just those resources are missing the resource group. The next section of this article is talking about the efficiency over 100% to represent shifts. So let's take a look at the example representing that. I have changed the efficiency on my resource back to 100% and I have increased the quantity on my production from 10 units to 100 units. When I run job scheduling and review my capacity reservations, I can see that in order to produce 100 units, I need 10 hours. And because I only have eight hours available per day for that resource, reservations were created for two different days. In order to reserve that job for one single day, we need to change the capacity of our machine from 100 to something that is greater. Let's change it to 200. We have changed the efficiency percentage of our machine to 200. 
and we are rerunning the job scheduling routine on our production order. Once that is complete, let's take a look at our capacity reservations. Now we will see that we have only one day booked, which is booked from 7 to 12 p.m., which is five hours times two, and this gives us 10 hours required to complete the entire job for 100 units of the item being produced. Another more user-friendly way to look at that would be looking at it through the capacity load form located on resource form as well. We can see that our total capacity available for today, which is October 25th, is 16 hours, out of which 10 been already reserved for our production order. The concept of profile that is used for shop floor or time and attendance workers is different and cannot be used for production scheduling routine as clearly mentioned in the article. Everton then discusses the concept of shift and how it applies to scheduling of production orders. There are multiple ways of handling shifts in Dynamics AX, including creating resources or resource groups and assigning applicable calendars to each. Other then talks about time profiles that are applicable to time and attendance workers, but those have no effect on scheduling of production orders. The next part of the article is talking about use of secondary operations. Let's put this to the test. For my production order, I've added one secondary operation that has the same operation number 10, which is finishing operation. This operation has a resource requirement that is calling for a specific operator, or you can define it on the operator group or resource group. As mentioned in the article, secondary operation do not allow the entering of times for the runtime setup, etc., because the times feed directly from the primary operation. Once I've added a secondary operation, I've run the estimation function on my production order. Once that completes, I can review the calculation details and note that there is another operation that is being added and the cost of it being estimated, which tightly links to my primary operation. Consumption hours are equal in this case for those two operations, one representing the primary operation for machine hours and the second one representing operator hours for the operator. Part number four of the article is talking about the use of the load parameter on the requirements tab of the route operation that can be used to define part-time availability of resource or part-time utilization of resource for a specific operation. The article states that with a percentage greater than 100, we can indicate that our operator is part-time attending to this machine. This will reduce hours of the secondary operation, so it will also reduce the cost. So let's put it to the test. On my production order, I will open the route card, navigate to my secondary operation 10, which is finishing, scroll down to resource load tab and increase the load from 100 to 200. Close and update route. I will then close to update route and rerun estimation function on my production order. Once that is complete, I will navigate to manage cost tab and click on view calculation details. What I notice is that my hours consumption increased from 0.1 of an hour for one finished good produced to 0.2 of an hour for one finished good produced. So here's a small discrepancy in the article. Once we increase the load from 100 to 200, we actually increase the hours, our consumption for our secondary operation. I think the right way to define a part-time of the operator on the secondary operation would be to reduce a load to a number that is smaller than 100%. Let's put it to the test. I will change the load on my secondary operation from 200 that I change it to back to 50%. I will close the form to update my production route and rerun estimation step. I will go then and review my calculation details and I will see that my hours for my secondary operation dropped from 0.2 of an hour for one finished good produce to 0.05 of an hour, which is half of the primary operation in this case. So here is a case that where the behavior in new Dynamics AX7 or Dynamics 365 operations app is different from Dynamics AX2012 described by the author. And in the final chapter of the article, author is talking about the use of the parameter that is known the number of machines or the number of resources. That parameter can be used to define multiple machines or multiple operators that can be used 
in parallel to execute the same operation. That, according to the article, would create multiple jobs, so the reporting of finished goods quantities can be done in parallel, which is a great feature. Let's take a look at how it works in Dynamics AX7. Coming back to my uh, route on my production order, and in this case, I will go and update my primary operation that is assigned to a machine. I will navigate to my production route and open my primary operation in this case. I will have to do a small change and change my resource requirements from a specific resource to a resource group. Once my resource requirement has been updated to a resource group 1110, which has multiple resources assigned to it, I can then change the quantity of resources from 1 to 2 and save that change. I will see that warning message saying that would you like to update time from 1, which was originally set, considering just one machine being involved, to 0.5 because of the two machines that are being introduced, and I will say yes. I will go then and close production route form to update my route and rerun estimation step. But when I navigate to my resource group 1110 that I define on my primary operation and look at the capacity reservations, we will be able to see two lines, one for each machine or each resource in that resource group that have half of the workload split among them. So again, great point by the author and great use of that feature. The last point that author makes in this article is that if your resource group does not have a number of resources that is defined on your route operation, then you're going to get an error that we all know that says that uh, not enough resources or resource group can be found with available capacity. Very common and very generic error, but in this case, its cause will be caused by the fact that there is not enough resources in defined resource group to cover the requirements defined on the operation. Hope you enjoyed this blog. There will be more to come from our series of upgraded blogs for Dynamics X. Thank you very much for your attention.